little too much that's, Lion King. Well, that's not even part of the Lion that King. That is Lion King. No, what I, the rest of it. Well, what no, I said. you added on. You did. You added on. All right, so are we live? Uh, I believe we are live. Are we live? Um, just make sure if you can. Mm -hmm. Um, just make sure. Mm -hmm. Let me see. I'm just gonna test this out. Make sure. We testing the audio. The mic sounds nice. Oh yeah, we are. It's I good. This. Since we got a little different audio set up here, because last time we was kind of sound like robots, just a little bit. Um. Yeah. All right, we're all good. I, I, I'm watching us right here. <laughs> I mean, no, I wasn't talking about us oh, visually. I'm talking about here. us audibly. Oh, okay. We know what we look like visually because that's that's right there. It's right there. Uh, are you gonna telling us say hi to the people's party? Yeah. Cause? Well, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna give everyone a second. Hey, everybody. Hello, hello. All right. I'm just gonna share. I'm going to just share this. She's sharing. Sharing is caring. I'm just going to share. You know, everybody. Come on, everybody. Okay, we're seeing you now. <laughs> Y'all. All right. Just, just going to share it. What if I was trying you, to see if, friends. If, um. And loved ones. Well, I did let people know um, that we were going on. Okay. I always call upon the team. Go team team. K-U-W-E. The who who. The woo woo. The woo <laughs> team. <laughs> Wait, is that what you called it? Yeah, we come. Yeah. No, that's what you call. Don't say we. That's yes. what you called it. I'm going to change it up. I won't say hump day treat. I'll say the pop up treat. How about that? <laughs> it's, all, it's all the same to me. Uh, mm -mm. I think it sounds a little more appropriate. Don't you think? Mm, no. No? Still, <laughs> still not working for you? Uh, Okay, no. Okay. Well, E for effort. Okay. <laughs> and still no. Okay. All right. So, are we going to sit and play with our phones? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Talking to the people. Well, um, I just said I was sharing. I just said I was sharing with some people. All right. Apologize for my manner, mm -hmm, mannerism, nope. manner. <laughs> you know, I told you we really need to come up with a theme song for. All right, mom, Women go ahead, Wonder. sing everybody with your theme song. Let's take a vote. <laughs> Let's wanna, take a vote, Facebook. I don't remember how sing. it went. I don't know how it went. Go ahead, mom. No, you know, could you be singing it? Women. No, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't even remember. What's how, your theme song? How I go get? I don't remember. Oh no, that was the Kingdom conversation. That was kingdom. It was Kingdom conversation. Kingdom. You don't like that song? She <laughs> think we still living in the nineties <laughs> and the eighties. Kingdom conversation. Come on now. Mom, I like that. You must grow with it's, the It's times. groovy. It's smooth. Mm -mm. It's jazzy. I feel like we put some jazz to it. <laughs> Conversation. Mm. Kingdom. Let's not. Let's not. You do don't that. like it? Mm, no. Okay. She's I a hater, it. I think, really, honestly. Well, let's do your rap that you have for. Well, let's I do that. I don't even remember what it is. See, that's lies and deception. It's not lies. I, I remember the. She movie. said, Lisa said, movie. let's get somebody else to sing. Whatever, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her out, Lisa. Whatever. You're a hater too, Lisa. That's my own sister hating on me. I don't know what this is, but she needs to never do it again. Uh-uh. Yeah. She said, y'all haters. Um, y'all hate it on my beautiful yes. voice. Okay. Maybe we should do like a competition. Like, I don't know. Send in 
your theme song idea. Yeah, for and we a, will give you a shout out for picking. Lisa, talk about no rapping, please. Hey, hey, this is the age of hip hop, old lady. Hey, look here. I this like hip hop. We do hip -hop. gospel Hooray. rap. No, hey, no. Rap is just poetry in a Put, rhythm. Right. I love hip hop. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. born in the hip hop era. Now okay? the rap music going on these days, I don't know what We're not going to say none about that trapping it's, people it's stuff. It's sound effects. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I mean, they say maybe three or four words. The rest well, of we never did the intro for one. The rest of it is sound effects. That's what pew pew ah, 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 ah. sound effects. Trap, 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 trap. How the fuck? It's not like somebody got Tourette's. <laughs> um, um, anyway. All right. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> in the welcome, home. everyone. Welcome, welcome to a Women Empowering Wednesday. Yes. We are here to empower all the women that's out there. Men too. You know, we don't want to just seem like we sexist over here because we're not. But, you know, a lot of women don't get the the ups and the praise and the lovingness that they need. So we are here to give it to you on Wednesday. So once a month, women, we go going So month. it's finally decided once a month? Once a month, yeah. Once a month, third Wednesday of the month, we will be here to empower you women, you know. And then if the Lord bless us with more people then you won't always just see me and not Asia. You might have other people, maybe we might increase it, you know, but, you know, and if you got things that you want us to talk about on this Women Power Wednesday, if there's something that you're going through throughout the week, inbox us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, on our website, kinderwomenenterprise.org, you know, just hit us up and we will bring it up. We'll have a conversation and we just empower another woman because you never know who else is struggling or going through the same thing that you're going through. So we like to share. Yeah. And, you know, we don't even pray over you, okay? We got you, sis. We got you. We ain't going to let you be out here high and dry and going through a rough day alone. Lisa said hi to us. We got your back. We got you. Where my girls at? From the front to the back. You know, feeling <laughs> No. Uh, 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 See, look. I got my sound effects, too. See? <laughs> we'll be trapping. Trap, trap, trap. Anyway. Anyway. So, I guess, if you don't know who we are, I'm not Asia. I'm Teresa. And we are bringing you the woo. The I don't know about that we woo thing. It is a woo. I mean, how else would you say woo? Woo, we, woo, 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 woo. The woo. Is that what W-E-W-E stands for? Woo? I mean, we, how, how we, else? We, we, we. No, because we, we just has a bunch of E's. We, we. We, we. We, we. I'm like a whistle. I don't know. So, you know, instead of like women. Because woo is really with an O. It's not really. Woo? No. It's not. It's, usually it's like W-H-E-W, -E but we're ghetto a little bit here. And we're going to just. I mean, the H is silent anyway. So. <laughs> that she was Might as well take it out. If she wants to sound like the H. Woo, woo. Woo, 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 woo. Anyway, your pop-up treat. This <laughs> We discarded Humphrey tree. I oh, still ain't sure about that pop up tree. What's wrong with a pop up? Oh. We just popping up. You know, once people, a month, people pop up and giving deal. them a treat. <laughs> Not tricking and treating, just treating and treating. I'm just saying, your treat and treat. <laughs> it still don't sound right because okay, if we're gonna just pop up and we're gonna give them a treat. You know, people get hurt for just popping up at somebody's house. Well, Whether they got we told not. you we were coming once a month, every <laughs> third Wednesday. Don't hurt us. <laughs> You're like, once a month. You know what once else comes once a month? The woo woo woo. I don't be having those problems. That awesome. <laughs> Why you got the minute pause? You, nobody has those problems. <laughs> 
Anyway, we so okay, off. I'm sorry. We also off subject. So anyway, listen. But I'm ser- you know what? Um, but I'm serious are. about what you were saying. We are looking for some theme songs. All right. So, whether it's rap or singing, and listen. Um, and you send it in. We'll give you a shout out. We'll play it. We'll have people take a vote to see who like it, and maybe that will become our intro, even for Women in Power Wednesday. Hey, Miss Tamika. Hey, Aunt Lisa. Love you guys. <laughs> she said Thank we silly. Thank you for joining. That's not Angel. That's us. silly, Tamika. It's not me. What? I'm sweet. I'm innocent. Now, I mean, first of all, have some music with your intros. Okay, so, okay, because the issue is not us finding words. I mean, because I can whip up some words. She can't whip up some I words. I just need, I need someone who can be, um, what would you call it, instrumentist? Instrumental? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a music person. I'm like. All right, I just need someone to make me a beat, some music. Give me a beat. You sound like Janet. Give me a beat. <laughs> Give me a beat. <laughs> okay. Yep, yep, yep. All right, because <laughs> my agent don't got time to sit gotta, down and bang beats, time. edit no videos, time. you know, talk to our, our clients, our beautiful ladies that we represent. I'm a single you know? Um, that's me. I'm a single lady. It's very time consuming, and time is something I just don't have time much of. Time. I'm I'm stretched in. Well, we are also taking anyone, anyone who wants to be a va- mom for real. Is this American Idol or what? What is happening? <laughs> this is what you get when you get somebody that's sleeping. But that is my song. Time after time. Uh huh. I love that song too. I don't never know what the verses Sin- are to Sin- that Lover. song, but I got you on the hook. But anyway, when back to what we were saying. And you were also, I mean, if I anyone is down. willing to volunteer to help me out in um, the digital world, please help me. You know, um, Molly got a song called Digital. Digital, but it's not a good song. Oh, so it's not I mean, like, I'm just saying that, you know. <laughs> no, just talk about, yeah. you know. So, if you have media experience and you want to donate some time to a nonprofit, Please hit me and up. And that's exactly what you will be doing, donating your time. I'm just letting you know out right out front right now. Thank you so much ahead of time for being so kind and volunteering your time to help me out. This way we can expand. There's no limitation. There's no caps. We can grow. Let's grow together. She said you could right. train some interns. Yeah, send send them interns to me. Okay, and I Lisa will train said, them let's up. talk about women fifty and over trying to date again. I know okay. that's right. All right, but that's gonna be our next one. You want? Do you well, want to talk about it? We can talk about it. About it. We let's talk about, about it. We ask them to bring us topics. We're gonna talk about it, and we'll do right. the news at the end because you All have right. given us a long intro. Okay. Yes. You wanted to go into other things. So let's talk about people. Well, you, know, I never you said 50 and older, right? She said, Lisa said, Lisa Scudder, that is. That's my sister. Hey, sister. She also said, um, let's talk about women 50 and over trying to date again. And then she said, and Tamika said, not age of rap. I know, right, Tamika? Stop. Let's stop let's do. This. Let's do my song. We're talking about the, the champ topic. The is here. Again. Uh-uh. Now, I want to know, I want to know. So we're talking about people 50 and older trying right. to date again. Yes. So let's, first of all, let's talk about what is the difficulty that you guys are finding 50 and older? Well, some of the difficulties is, could, if you don't mind, let me just straighten my headband a little bit. So my um, issue is about 50 and older because, you know, there is some men that's in their 50s who think they're still in their 20s who lives with their mother and so that's an issue okay so this is this is what i find okay now this is something that helped me out because i might not be 50 or older but (laughs) but i was having you know i was having struggles finding appropriate people to date I, mean, I like the way you put that appropriate people to date. Yeah, that should be that people. should be a book. Appropriate people because, to date. Because see, I think we misinterpret what dating is. Okay, so like what we like to do 
you know, especially us as believers, we don't follow the same dating process as someone in the world. I mean, someone in the world can date and call that person their boyfriend, um, girlfriend, and then be living like a whole married couple and then be wondering why you 12, 11 years in and he still ain't asked you to marry you yet. Or he asked you and y'all engaged like forever. Right. Okay. This is the issue, right? Because the dating process is not just... You know, you just hanging out with someone and, ooh, I like them. And now I'm trying to get them to become my boyfriend or girlfriend and that's it. Mm -mm. The dating process is you evaluating before you get too emotionally involved whether or not this person is suitable to be in a relationship with. So, for example, right? You should have an idea of what you want in a man and what um, a good man should be, you know, um, and one that fits you. Now, my thing is, you know, we can't have, like, ridiculous things, you know, just, like, ridiculous things. I mean, because no one is absolutely perfect. You're not perfect, right? Right. But there should be somewhat of a guideline. Like, first of all, your issue was a man who is still living at home with his mom and being a couch potato. Now, you should know when you first start dating them before you get too emotionally involved whether or not they're living with their mama or not. Well, that's, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying, you said what was the issue of, with us dating? So that was said, one of the well, issues well, that I'm just saying, saying that Because you have, you have men out here who still have um, immature mindset. And that's pretty much what it is. It's the fact that they have these but immature mindsets. But see, not mindset. all men are like that. So my the question is now why are you pursuing men with child First of all, like mindsets? We are not pursuing anyone. They pursue us. Why are you accepting we a proposal? But evidently you are because you're ending up with them. Well, yeah, I have in the past. Like you so know, the Because it starts is, off like this. It starts off with it ain't like you start off with like straight into a relationship. You know, yeah, it's just that you start off with Okay, y'all talking, you're friendly, and then, like, there's a lot of lies that you don't know about until after you get into involved, because you don't know always. Like, ain't no man, excuse me by saying ain't, but no man is really going to come out and be like, yeah, girl, yeah, I'm, like, 40, 50 years old, I'm staying with my mom, and I'm sleeping on the couch. Don't nobody tell you that so right my, away. my thing is, how involved are you get, in getting with this person before you get to the truth? Because my thing is, I mean, before you officially, I mean, for me, like with me and my husband, me and him dated for three months before we even called each other boyfriend and girlfriend. Three months of just dating. Because one, one thing, people cannot hide who they are. More than three months before some some things start slipping and things start bubbling out. So Lisa also want to know, um, I want to know, should a woman seek out a man or let the man seek her because I'm the latter? Well, you know, I have um, I have some, um, what you call them, talk about Pastor, you know, Darius Daniels. I talk about him every time because I do watch a lot of his stuff, his teachings and everything. And he told on that. And he came from um, when he talked about um, Naomi and Ruth. And he was talking about that. And he was saying how she went out there in the fields. She was making herself seen. Because ain't no man, if you're not out there where they can see you, then how they going to find you if you're in the house? So, you know, he was saying also when, when um, now when, what was it? Naomi told Ruth to dress in her best dress, and go lay at his feet. So so she was putting herself out there to be seen. 
You know, there are some women that are out there that it's a little bit more aggressive. They'll be like, hey, boo, you know, There's that kind of stuff. It's not up, so but... much aggression. See, my thing is, right, like, with just, it, <laughs> like, <laughs> Siri. all right, okay, Siri. Siri, no one asks you, Siri. Because <laughs> just like anything else, if you want it, you pursue it, right? So, in the same thing, and, and if you I really care. read the story of Naomi and Ruth, you know, first of all, before she sent Ruth out to pursue Boaz, she pretty much stated why he was qualified to be a good man for her. He had this going on. He's one of our our kinsmen. He's a good man. He does this. He does that. Or whatever the case might be. There was qualifications of why he was suitable to be a good partner. All right. So so she was saying, well, do you think it's good to be for with a person about uh, about your do's and don'ts. I mean, my thing is, if you have things that you don't like, then you don't like them. So now, so okay. But let me just say, let me answer some questions from on the fifty person basis because it's different when you're in your thirties and your twenties than when you're fifty and you have been married before. And you have kids and things like that. So sometimes you want to be a little, we are a little bit more cautious because we have been through a lot. Not saying that people that's in their 20s and 30s don't go through a lot, but you you have been through a lot. So, so, so that kind of makes you a little bit more cautious about, especially if you have been in some jacked up relationships and stuff, it does make you a little bit more cautious about going out there or even letting yourself be a little bit more vulnerable to a man because, you know, uh, the simple fact that you don't want to wind up back in those bad relationships again. So sometimes it's just a little harder for women that's once they in their 50s, unless you're just that kind of woman that don't care and we just out here to have a good time. But if you're a kind of woman that if you're looking for a husband or that you want a husband and you know that everybody said, oh, this way on the Lord, the Lord's going to see somebody. You know, that is true. The Lord do position people in places and things so y'all can meet. But then sometimes people will come across like they are sent from the Lord. And sometimes your feelings or and will get more in the way that you, sometimes you miss some of the warning signs sometimes. You know, that kind of thing. And you wind up back in that same, that same mess. So it's kind of hard to... When you reach a certain age, so like just really put yourself out there and make yourself vulnerable, vulnerable to people, you know, because of the simple fact that you just don't want to wind up with the same thing you've been getting. So I get what you're saying, but see, in a way, it sounds more. And well, since it's me, I see. Cause I'm trying to see if I could invite you in, but because we're doing this through OBS and not straight live, um, it's not allowing me to just like invite you, invite you in. See if you go through Kingdom Women Enterprise, and you know how sometimes it has where you can share. Um, uh, well, like invite someone not through your page, but through Kingdom Woman Enterprise. I thought that's what I was on. Oh, okay. Um, well, go ahead. Finish doing what you but, said. But um, like I was saying, so there is a difference between Excuse being Excuse me for cautious. one second. I got to step away for <laughs> one second while you go. Go ahead and have okay. your conversation. So there's a difference from being cautious and then also um being a little bit paranoid. Because sometimes what happens is, and I, I find this a lot um, in the older you get and the more experiences that you go through and things like that, um, you become less patient. So anything that reminds you of a past relationship a little bit, because you got to think everyone is human they make mistakes they have their small issues they have their small flaws no one's perfect kind of thing so anything that slightly reminds you of something that someone else was you immediately just shut that person out or whatever you give no no um wiggle room no grace 
at all. And so sometimes we we are saying we're being cautious, but sometimes we're being defensive. We're putting up walls, which means it's making hard, making it hard for someone to come in. And especially when you get older, you kind of get a little bit more stuck in your ways. Um, you like things are a particular way um, and you leave no room to compromise. No, um, no room to um, be open with anyone. Because first of all, when you're trying to start a relationship with anyone, <clears throat> you should be developing a friendship. Just getting to know that person, just becoming their friend. Let me find out even if I just like you as a person. Like to just hang around you as a person, as an individual. Let me get to know you. Let us be friends. Because if I can be your friend and understand who you are as a person, your mindset, the way that you think, your beliefs, your likes, because this is the evaluation process here. This is why I say dating is more about evaluating more than trying to mate, okay? We making mate in the end goal. The end goal here is I need to evaluate you to see if you're even suitable. My goal is for us to first to become friends. Yeah, but the thing is, Lisa was asking also is the fact that is it okay like if the female to make the first one because you know like the word of God always said when a man finds a wife he finds a good thing but you know people get that scripture a little mixed up to be with that too but you pursue <laughs> you put like I was saying before you pursue after what you want I mean if you know this guy because it could be that he's just a little bit more of a shy or timid person or whatever so he's not you know, gonna be like the first one to speak or whatever the case might be. And sometimes you, you know, he might not realize you actually like him. So you might need to make it known to him. It's okay to pursue, to pursue after what you like. The thing is, um, don't get to a place where you're being promiscuous and where, your obsession obsessing over someone um who does not have an interest in you because this is when it's unhealthy see the thing is right when god presented eve to adam he paraded her around him he didn't say here adam this is for you no he paraded her around him presented her before him and he accepted all right, but he didn't go seeking after her. God presented her. And so in the same way, you know, God presents you. You know, sometimes you get, you know, if God puts it on your heart to, um, you know, let a man know that you're uh, um, available and that you're interested in him, do so. But allow him the chance to accept your invite. Because... It, like my husband, I went after him. He used to say that he need to ask God to give him courage. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like, like for instance, right? My husband, or whatever the case might be, I liked, I liked him. He didn't know or did not realize that I liked him, and he is a very shy person. You know, he like when it talk, you know, comes to talking. To women, he was not that much um, experienced as I am, you know, kind of thing when it comes to relationships. So for him, um, it's not as easy as it was for me, you know, because I've been in multiple relationships, you know, before, um, you know, dating him or, you know, pursuing him. So, you know, for him... You know, he's, uh, he was a more in to himself kind of person. He's an outgoing person, but when it comes to stuff like that, like, you know, he was nervous. So if I did not let my man know that I wanted him, we, I would have never gotten my bow ass. Okay. <laughs> I would have never gotten 
the guy of my dreams. If I did not pursue and make him look here, Chris. Look here. I like you. <laughs> you said you was just fast. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't fast. I wasn't fast. But let me fast. just say, it, it's not that <clears throat> you was fast. You so crazy. I wasn't uh, fast. It's just that, you know, I, I'm a true believer as well. If, you, if there's something that you want or if there's something that you want, I would say go go for it. And, you know, and there's, you feel like maybe there's a connection or something with you and someone, then the only thing, the only thing they could say is no. You know what I'm saying? So if you be like, okay, do you want to have some dinner? You can, whatever the case may be. Oh, hey, this is my number. If they don't never call, then fine. Then you already know right then and there that, okay, then maybe they're not interested. But I do say that the only way you really would know if you put yourself out there. And if you don't put yourself out there, then you will never know. I mean, because you got to give God something to work with. I right. mean, uh, you he can't work with you if you're just sitting around the house watching TV, okay? Then your date is that TV. Or playing hard to get or, you know, trying to bait the rabbit over here. <laughs> like, oh, I like him, but I'm going to wait for him to um, talk to me first. Uh, well, I, I guess you're going to be waiting. Right. Just right. straight up like that. You're going to be waiting. And sometimes, and I think like nowadays too, I think a lot of guys like for the woman to make the first move. I think some men like it when the woman makes the first move. Yeah, because sometimes it's attractive to a man for a woman who goes after what she wants. And it's not like, oh, you're trying to um, manipulate him to get in the bed with you or anything like that. You just say, you know, hey, um, I'm a little bit okay. interested in you, and yeah, okay. I would like <laughs> to get, I would like to get to know you. Lisa talk about. I want to know who you are as a person. Lisa said, "I'm a true believer. If I'm fanning the flame, you better, if you don't go for it, then bye." So my question <laughs> is, are you fanning? Are you fanning the flame? Because are you fanning the flame in a way that he can interpret it? Because we see us at women, as women sometimes, we think men are supposed to be mind readers. And they're not, because they don't think like us. No. You know, because like women, women, I think we observe more. I think we notice more things. I think we, and I think some men are not as much like women do. And so I think sometimes they need that little extra push or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Because not. You know, they, they, you know, you do get some men that are very aggressive and they don't mind approaching a woman. But, you know, just like women, some men do, fear the rejection, too. So they may not make that first move. So, Lisa, stop fanning the flames and just be like, yo. Be on fire. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but, no, just be honest. That's what it is. Um, Be honest. Hey, I like you. I would be interested in getting to know you. Um, if you're interested in getting to know me, can I have your number? Or do you want my number? Or here's my number. Give me a call, call, call me if you're anytime. interested. Call me. You know, because that's what I did. No I, um, to, uh... you know, um, so really, well, I kind of baited Chris. <laughs> so she my said, she said Lisa said what do you want me to do if he's looking and staring at you and you fan in the flame okay if he's sitting there staring and looking at you ask him you like what you see <laughs> then call me give it cause most, he would either say yes or no They're like okay well how about you buy me dinner next Monday at 12. I think the whole thing with a lot of people. And I we'll think get it's to know a, each other. I think it's just a fear of rejection. I think that's what it is with a lot of people. Well, you know, nowadays, these time, you know, these days of age, you know, you don't have to be rejected in the faith. You can be rejected by text. <laughs> so it's not as hurtful because you don't see the person's face when they rejected you. So it's probably not as bad these days of age because a lot of things is dumb via text message see but my thing is see this is where the whole dating to become friends thing is because now what are you uh afraid of the person not wanting to be your friend 
But okay, nice. See Angie, now come you on. might the end goal might be that you want to get in a relationship, but that should not be so like this is this is how I see it. Okay. You should not go into any kind of relationship just like all right. I'm into this relationship because I want to be in a relationship. Because this, the minute that it's not moving the way that you like, you get angry and frustrated because you already have an agenda. But don't everybody and so, in some but kind see, of way this, have but an agenda? The thing is, even if you your just... agenda should be trying to get to know the person. True. Not so much trying to get the person to be in a relationship with but you. But at the end of the day, inside, you know... Especially if you the kind of man or woman, if you're inside, you know that really I'm looking for a husband or I'm looking for a wife. So, you know, inside, that's really what it is. And the end game is, that's what it is. And of course, you don't just rush into a, some in a marriage or anything else without getting to know the person. But sometimes people hide a lot of things. And that's what, another thing that's what I'm See, saying. See, this is what I say. Because people can hide things for years. Okay, this is why I say dating, as far as being a believer, is different than dating in the world. Because dating as a believer, all right, because in the in, in the world of the kingdom, you're either single or married. Why are you pointing at That's people? it, single or married or whatever. We like to treat boyfriend and girlfriend relationships as marital commitments, and then this is where the frustration comes. Okay, so. My thing is, you know that you desire to get married. Mm -hmm. Your end goal is to get married, right? Mm -hmm. But what you're trying to do is find an appropriate suitor. So you should be dating multiple people. But you know what they call that, right? No, you're only being a hoe if you're sleeping with them all. <laughs> I didn't say. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're about to say, because. If you're dating multiple people, because this is, as believer, because we, we don't date. We evaluate. We're evaluating whether or not you are a proper suitor. You had to make that rhyme. We don't date. We That's a, Is that a cheer? It's, no. We don't it's date. It's just a reminder. Believers, kingdom women of God, we don't date. We evaluate. Mm -hmm. People in the world date. They can sleep around, do what they want to do. We are on a mission to find a proper suitor, okay? So we are about evaluating different men to see whether or not they're appropriate to even go as far. So what we're doing is developing friendships. We're getting to know people. Different people find out who they are, what, they, what their likes is, what their lifestyles, what is their goal, what is their vision. Now you're evaluating, can I fit in this vision for the, for himself, what he my likes to do? Is, my thing is, really is, like, if truly you want to you wanna be with somebody that is about something, too. That's what I was saying. You, This is the evaluating part. This is, see, this is what, where we're failing at. We don't know how to date because we're just trying to get in relationships with people. And I'm telling you, it doesn't work. She's telling you. Can't you hear I, the tone? I have made this mistake plenty of times to know it doesn't work. It doesn't work. What worked was me evaluating. Me and Chris, you know, I let him know that I liked him. There was another guy who was also interested in me at the same time. Now, what I did was get to know them both, just their friends. I, I'm just hanging with you. There's no kissing involved. There's no kind of physical intimacy happening here. None of that. Well, All I'm doing place. is hanging around you, getting to know who you are as a person, getting to know your um, um, your your environment, who are your friends, what you like to do, where you like to go, where you like to hang, what's on your mind. What's your goals? What's your vision? What's the dream you have for yourself? You know, I'm not even trying to get you to be my boyfriend at this point. I'm just trying to get to know you as a person. I just want, I just want to know if I even like you as a person. I mean. But what you do in them, and you know, because there are 
times where you can sell our friends and we just hanging out and you know we all even in groups we go out to eat we just do things we chit chat on the phone we just cooling we chilling time go on then they want to get a little bit more serious let's just make this exclusive with us okay we exclusive and time go on and let's just say after so many years and then y'all get engaged and then you get married to this person and everything that you thought you knew <laughs> okay you said a couple of years yeah. There's like no way yes, that this a, person hid yes, everything about themselves yes, for that, a that, whole uh, for yeah. a bu- for several years. Yes, I'm without there you. being any kind of flag or anything that you didn't ignore. Listen, if you're just hanging out and y'all just friends, you know that kind of thing, and y'all hanging out in groups. So my question is that. where you hanging out at? Like y'all go out to eat. Y'all go to, like y'all even groups. You ain't never been invited over to his house? No, well, you didn't never go to his oh, house. Oh, because you don't know him. See, you didn't get to know him. Well, I said get to know their environment. If a man has never brought you to his house to let you see where what he about lives, you went to their house or then? whatever the case is. How about you went to their house then? You've been inside his house. Yeah, you, well, if you've been inside his house, there are things that will be revealed about that man, person. What about if he got a man that still lives at home because he's waiting to get married before he move out his mama house, his family's house? Like okay, the mother, well, father. he should be inviting me over to a family dinner or something. What about if he did? Because if we're friends, nice. there's no problem with that. We're just friends. So why can't I get to know your mom? We're just yeah, friends. But say if you do, you get to know the mom and she's a sweet And you can woman. see the way that he treats his mom and how he, how his mom treats him. Because, see, there's also these weird dynamics where these moms are trying to make their sons their man. But I'm because, just saying, no, his, the father's still in the house. They only do that when the father's back in the house. Okay, so if the father's still in the house. Okay, and then also you evaluate his father, the way that he treats his mom. People put them in the way that his mom treats him. Because if his mom, because look here, this is getting to know someone's environment. And this is how you evaluate. Hey, this man, his mom pretty much does everything for him. She still makes all their plates, his plate and stuff like that. This is the culture that he grew up, not saying that there's anything wrong with it. But this is his culture. He's used to a woman making his plate for him. Doing his laundry for him. So I know if I get into a serious relationship (laughs) with this man. She's doing her investigation. He is going to have this type of expectancy. And see now what we do wrong is. Okay. But when we get together. I'm going to change this. You should never go into a relationship. Trying to change anything about a person. Because if you like them and love them for them, you love them just the way that they that. are. <clears throat> so if you don't like what they are right now, don't think when you get married or y'all get into a relationship or y'all start getting it on well, I know that, that that's going to change. There's one pastor that used to always say there's an 80-20. And 20, sometimes 20, you just have to put up with. If they 80% of what you want, what you need, and what is good, and the other 20% is jacked up. But sometimes you got to just think about how jacked up is that 20% though. Because if that 20% is really jacked up, then that... If- and see, that can all be a part of your own expectations too. Because sometimes we put expectations on people. Instead of just allowing people to be who they are and learning how to love that person. Without trying to alter them or change them. Tamika said back in it, she said, men pursue what they want. It is always um, exception to the rule. When a man is interested in you, you will know. Well, I think that's true too. And a man also knows it too, if he want to really make you his wife or not. I'm a true believer that too. I believe a man knows whether or not he's going to marry you within a year. Within a year, he should know whether or not you're a female he's he's thinking about spending the rest of his life with. I'm a strong believer in that. I think after a year, you know whether or not <laughs> you want to be Do you with- want to be locked down with this man? You know his ways. <laughs> 
you know the kind of expectancies or pressures and stuff because a little a little a little of those things start bubbling out that's why i say a whole you 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 should be dating i say date what we consider dating believers evaluating for three months before you even become an official boyfriend and girlfriend and then wait a year Date that person for a year. Date that person for a year. Because then that thing, all those little things start coming out. All their insecurities, all their frustrations, how they handle pressure, how they handle arguments and things like that, disagreements. Um, their, but then um, when some people say, oh, you know, he's a little jealous. That's cute, but that cute. That see, you, goes ev- into crazy. you evaluated <laughs> that the wrong way. Who told somebody talked about that? You one, evaluated huh? that <laughs> the wrong way. Especially because your friends were like, hey, I know you really feeling this dude, but I don't know because he just seemed a little. And oh. then you will ignore it because you want you want it. And see, my thing is, this way, in this whole year, there should be no sex involved. No sex involved. Let me tell you, I was straight up with 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 Chris and gave him an option. To, see, my thing is tell the man was what your Chris, expectancy. Was it Chris and then or tell was him, it you? What? That was like, oh, we could wait. It was me. I let him know. Hey, I want to. I just want to let you know. I don't believe in sex before marriage. Cause then I already let you know. Cause if. He knows this about you and is still trying to talk you into having sex or not respecting you and trying to tempt you into having sex. That already lets you know the kind of man that you have. Because any kind of man who respects you as a person would not try to pressure you into doing something you don't want. Lisa said, look, that's not true. In every case, it's different. Um, I think three years, you know, you need to... Three years you need because you need to make sure they can endure things. All I know is... This is is, my thing is then you don't waste the three years of your life in a relationship with someone that you don't end up with. Well, my thing is, my I think that if I feel like if you are friends with somebody and then that friendship is starting to turn into a relationship, but if their, their goals are not like your goals. If they're not the kind of person that want to build something or do something, you know, like if you're, if you're the kind of person like, okay, I'm going to just use me as I said, like, you know, I'm trying to get this business up and going and, you know, trying to expand that thing. And if I'm going to get meet up with somebody or be with somebody or even friends or, um, be in a relationship with somebody, they have to have some goals too. You know, they can't, they go cannot just be, but let me just sit on this couch and play video games and, and, and we just eat or I'm just going to watch sports kind of thing. You know, they have to have some, they, you have to have some kind of, similar goals. goes, not to say that it had to be where he want to do his own business, but some kind of similar goals because then you're just working your grind and you're working your hustle and he's not, and that's going to frustrate you. And if yeah. he's not somebody that has your back and helps support your 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 goal, your dream, or your vision, and vice versa with the man, if you're not that kind of woman that want this is not where you're gonna go, because there's a lot of people even in church. There, y'all start off good, y'all save, y'all go to church. You know, I even heard like even with some pastors, you when they start building their churches and stuff like that, and the Lord have given these visions and they're they spend more time building the vision with the church and everything else. And then the women start feeling neglected and she just start going out having affairs. And there's time when they be in marriages for years, but, and then the Lord might take them in another direction. And that woman is not wanting to go in that same direction and, see, and things fall off. So, you know, there's a lot of things and the devil plays in a lot of situations and stuff too. But I just said, you just have to be careful. You just got to stay prayed up no matter what you do or who you with. You know, and you just got to be, make sure you deserve it of them spirits. Because, and the Lord will always give you warning signs. You just have to be connected enough to, and take the blinders off to yeah, see them. Stop being in denial, too. And I tell people all the time with me, 
I said, listen, if I like him, then he ain't for me because I'm not a good judgment of a person to like, I can't like, if I like you and I want to be with you, then I know that you are not the person to me because of the simple fact I just picked the wrong people. Like I would really just see, I would like, I just picked the wrong people and it just turned out jacked up. So I have come to the conclusion in my life that if I like you, it's not meant to be. If it's something I want, then it's probably it's Yeah, because you got to go with someone beyond just attraction and chemistry. Because some people have really good charisma. But that does not mean that they're good for you. And your flesh is like, ooh, I like them. But if you evaluate this person's character, you'll realize they're not a good person. See, all the things that you mentioned, these should be things you should be finding out about this person before you even get serious, before you even get into a real relationship, a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship with them. Because during this, during this project, you, as a friend, you can find out whether or not someone has a dream or I, a vision for themselves. I really believe that if you get, if you start being friends with someone and if your friendship wants to turn into more than just a friendship and wants to turn into a relationship i think you should just go into counseling because yep. that's a i think you should just start off not like that pre-marital counseling but i think you should just go into counseling where you can have a mediator kind of person a neutral kind of person that that's there in your life because of the simple fact there are some things that when you're in a relationship you don't see or you do have blinders on certain things or even you don't see it, you do see it and then you'll make excuses for it or some, sometimes. And sometimes you just need that outside person to, to pick it out for you so you can hear or so you can see. But I really believe that if you start, like, if you start getting into a relationship, I really believe that you should go into counseling I think you should have premarital counseling, and I think once you get married, you should still go through counseling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, okay, so the way I see it, too, is that all these things, you should be knitting out the butt before you get too emotionally involved. See, the thing is, especially women, we like to wait until we are too emotionally involved. Well, I mean, you could say that, but I'm, I mean, I'm telling you right now, even uh, I I know that there is times, you could say that now, but there are times where you can be friends with somebody and then your friendship turns into a relationship and everything is cool, everything's good, y'all can get married. But there, there are times when people do still hold certain skeletons in the closet. And you don't see them skeletons until after you get married and after you and that person moved in together. Sometimes you don't see it until you actually move in with that person, these skeletons that they really have. Because people could tell you a lot of things. You can meet family and things like that, but all you know is that person's story and what that person told you. That's like the only so thing they is know you is your story. have a conversation with family members on the side because fam family members snitch. No, they not all some, family members. They some let family, some things slide. Some family some members things cover for them too. So you know, but, you just ask simple questions. See, like me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a evaluation. I'm a evaluator kind of person. I know how to ask or get an a answer to something without putting the question straight out there. So my thing is, right, the person I'm dating done told me a story about some ex or whatever the case might be and, and, and why they broke up. So I might be in a room with one of his family members. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's really messed up, though, what happened between him and his ex-girlfriend, right? And let them talk because they don't know what he told me. This is how you're finding out information. Oh, oh, really? That's, um, yeah. Yeah, he told me about that. No, I didn't, but now I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's only, that's because, only if you can find that family member that talk. And 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 sometimes this is why you got to be around their environment. This is why I say, look, you should not be getting feel, feelings involved with someone who you don't know. Because that's what it is. You're 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 falling in love and you're getting feelings 
around an ideal of who you think this person is. But actually, and then you get disappointed when you find out they're not what you what no, you're that's thinking. That's not always true because, like I said, there are situations when people do cover up truly who they are, and you don't find out truly who they are until you actually get really involved, get married, and y'all living together. And then you be like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And then you in a marriage with somebody that. You didn't know everything to them, cause they're, cause I, cause I like I watch a lot of past couples, and like they even talk about, you know, how they are like going through counseling, even now that they marry, even like years in, they are still they go to counseling because there are some things that's deep down embedded, and then sometimes it don't come out until you actually get married and get into relationships that sometimes you don't know that that scar is even there or that whatever the case may be. So I'll just say on this subject here, because I don't want to stay on this subject forever, that um, if you out there, I, me as a woman that's 50 plus, I believe that it, it doesn't hurt to put yourself out there. It doesn't hurt to put yourself out there. Um, you, there may be times where you get rejected just don't take it to the heart and just close yourself out and be like, I never want to do this again because there will be a time when that right person that God really has for you will come along. And, um, and what, even when God send that person that he has for you, don't think they, they're not going to have no mess with them because, um, people are people and yeah. they are human beings. So they're always going to be some kind of flaw or some kind of mess with that person, with you, with them, or whatever. So I would say before you if before you make decisions, make sure you just get some counsel, get a third party, a third person involved, so they can hear all sides of the stories, so they can see, because they can see more clearly, because they're not involved. And I would say just don't be scared to put yourself out there. And I would also put in be open, um, be open, because sometimes. You know, the older you get, the more closed off. Because think about when you were younger, you had a lot more grace and a lot more patience. And sometimes we have let past relationships suck that out of us. And so now when we do meet that person who might just be the person that God, you know, put in our lives, but we have allowed people who were not meant for us to eat up so much of our patience and our grace that we give that person no room. Well, I think on that subject there, I think if that's the person that God has really sent for you, that God will work on your heart to knock down the walls. I truly believe that. And I believe that if even if you're giving that person a hard time, they won't be so quick to give up on you because they know that God sent them for you. So, and then, it, and God will also reveal to them that you need that time to break that ice or melt that ice that's on your heart and knock down the walls that's around you. See, but my but, thing is also that you shouldn't even be getting into relationships until you get some healing in those parts. Because nobody wants to be around no bitter person. Nobody. I know. I was listening to uh, what's his name, um, Tor. What's his Tor? Um, Sarah Jates Roberts' husband. What's his name? Torrey Roberts, and he was doing like it, he did a thing. It's on YouTube, and he talks about relationship. Your soulmate. I think it was like five keys to your soulmate or something like that. And he talks about this song by Tori Kelly is her name. It's a song. And it's a, really the song is really about dating yourself. Dating yourself and knowing yourself. And when you're okay with yourself, that you can date yourself and you good by yourself, then you know that you really healed. Yeah. So, you know, what's a good video to watch? And this is what helped me. This is, on, honest to goodness, this is what helped me because I was failing at relationships horribly. And I said, I got to break this cycle because... I'm, now you don't want to go through this no more, okay? But watching Dr. Miles Monroe, The Myth of Singleness. Mm-hmm. I watched that too. That really, really 
help me. Because what it does is he pretty much what he says is that a, a relationship is only as good as the two individuals within it. And before you can become a couple or a relationship or a family or anything like that and get in covenant with anyone, if you're a bad egg, it only takes one bad egg to ruin the whole batch. So you need to find out how to be a full person within yourself, a mm -hmm. full, happy, single person. And learn how to be happy with yourself before you start dating someone else. Because we have this misconception, which has been taught to us in church a lot and some other things um, in the world where we got this ha glass half empty mentality that I need to find my other half to complete me. I got to find that person that completes me. And the way that he puts it is if you have two half empty glasses and you pour all that you are into that other person to make them a full glass, now you're an empty glass. And now they have to pour into you to try to fill you up and now they're empty. And all you guys are doing is draining each other. But if you are a whole full glass, and this person is also a full glass. When you pour into each other, it should be overflow. And that's what you want to do. You want to get to a place where you are content with your relationship with yourself and your relationship with God, that you are a whole complete person, that you're healed, not trying to use someone to fill a void in you that is aching and that is empty and you're you're putting too much pressure or too much of a responsibility on an individual to make you happy, to complete you. God never meant for that to happen. When Adam was given Eve, he was given Eve because he was all one. He said, God said, it's not good for men to be alone. When you break alone up, it's all one. He was a complete person, just like God was complete. And he needed something, something to love on. See, this person, a complete and a all one person, a whole person. Now that person's in a good position and is suitable to love someone else because they are, they are complete within themselves and they're not putting pressure on someone else to complete them, to make them happy, to make them satisfied. Adam didn't feel like he was lonely. God told him, you're alone. You're all one. This, is, this isn't good. Let's find you someone who's suitable for you. And then pull something out of him to bring him that, 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 that suitable person, you know, but that person has to be all one. You have to be a complete and whole person. You know, we put too much responsibility on other people to make us happy. All right. Yeah. So that is, if you want more finding about relationships, there's a lot of stuff with Dr. Miles, Dr. Miles Moreau. Female and male relationships. Myth of, uh, myth of singleness, um, married, single, and divorce. And, Those are the ones you should watch. Um, also, Dr. Um, Darius Daniels, he has some information as well. He teaches on relationships. And, and what's that other guy? I think he's out of, um, I don't know if he's Colorado or Ohio. His, he's, his name starts with a T, Tyrell, Tyrell. Um, Sean went to his church. White oh. Sean. Uh, you talk about? Are you talking about? Um, He's kind of young, black guy, like Michael, Michael, oh Michael Todd or something Michael like Todd. that. Okay, I know there was a T yeah, in there he someone. A, he Michael has a, a sermon or something like that about singleness. Yeah, he, and he, that he was did a, a whole one series too. on singleness. Yeah, and it's pretty much some of the things that we talked about too. Um, well, being that we didn't get to our regular topic, but let's um, get to our news, and we're going to share some. Uh, 
our news that is coming up. Now, AJ, do you want to talk about what news we got coming up? All right. So, all right. First things first. This Saturday, we have our free grant writing workshop with Miss Stacy Bellavia. Um, that will be at 1 p.m. our time, Mountain Time, and 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Mm -hmm. Um, it will be Facebook Live, but if you want to be able to um, answer, que ask questions, and to speak with her face to face, um, we have the um, Zoom it link. is the Zoom link, so it's also via Zoom. So via Zoom, if you want to do the Q and A part. If you just want to watch and glean the information, you can just watch it live. Um, the links are available on the actual event post and on um, all the different posts about um, ads about the um, workshop. workshop. Um, also, um, we have our series of Kingdom Conversation that has been launching every Saturday at 10 a.m., on bitterness, which is a awesome Good conversation. conversation, great conversation, or whatever, because you know some of the stuff that we talk about might help you fifty and olders. And you know what, <laughs> what and that you brought that up because you know sometimes you do things and you wonder is anybody really watching these videos or is any you know that kind of thing. And I actually got a text from an old friend who even was like. You know, I really watch, I watched your video stuff, and I was like, okay, so it is touching somebody. So, you never know. Yeah. And they have some good videos. Yeah, I've got a few testimonies, about, you know, about, you know, a couple of people who really do um, love them and find them very empowering. So, you know, watch them. There might and be some great And I just want to thank resources. all the people that, that I guess, that we had on that yes. share with us, like some, like, some of the topics we had that was personal to them, and and things like that and really help and with these discussions i do appreciate them too yeah because you know these women are being very vulnerable and very transparent mm -hmm. and they they study they really take the time out to really think about what they're giving before um they put it out there so they really invest the time to um pour into you guys in these videos so support them love like share the video share it with a friend one that's going to be helpful we did yeah. um uh, uh women of the bible what was the first series that we did the very first first one the very first first um kind of conversation we did was really it was just we was just talking about uh I know we talked a little bit about the last days, yeah, what it right means there. to be in like the kingdom of God, relationships yeah. with God, what mm -hmm. God's true ministry is, um, and God's love, what right. what what true abounding love is. That was the first one, the, the first set we did. Uh huh. Then the second one we did the um, women of the Bible. Yeah. Um, different business women yeah. or women in leadership in the Bible. The women, that was pretty good. Yeah, that one's really really good. I think a lot of people love the Ray have one. Yeah, that one. There, I think it was one. And Mar Esther was and, and, and Miriam. Yeah, was people another. really love those yeah. those three. The and most. if you don't want to watch the videos, like you know, we do have podcasts. We are on podcasts too and what is it called spotify <laughs> spotify yeah we so are you can there. listen and so drive you can, you can listen to drive yeah and listen that way if you can't sit down and watch the video yeah but there's some good ones as a matter of fact there are some ones i didn't get to release yet so i might run those again and just insert the ones that we haven't um released yet yeah so. they are they are really good. and they're not long like they're not hours uh you know i think the most it might be like 30 40 minutes top not even, it, even not even i, like, I try to get it, keep everything right, down 30, to 25 minutes to 25 30 minutes yeah so that way because i know sometimes we all have a short attention span i know i do so but like <laughs> most what you could do is fast forward past the intro get to the the middle part and then not watch the closing because that's what it is it's just one like day a, you're gonna watch and we're gonna have a theme song so you don't want to miss that <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah gonna be kingdom so i know i'm just messing she's not gonna let me do that one no never 
Yeah. So I'm watch, gonna think it all through the whole share, thing. like, comment, leave a comment, and yeah, don't, don't forget about support the, us. Don't forget the um, the event. Oh, well, I'm, I'm getting there. Oh, okay. I was ending that I'm one. I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Next thing. On this Saturday um, at 11 a.m., one of our silver members, Miss mm-hmm. Kim Muhammad, and her daughter, Zuri, with Zuri Circle, her beautiful circle. Yes. Um, they are celebrating their 10-year anniversary 10 years. for their nonprofit. 10 years. Yeah, so, you know, celebrate with them. Celebrate Go out to support. Donate to their um, um, their their nonprofit, their organization, because they do a lot for the community. They help the elderly. Um, they help low-income families. Yeah, they um, they set up gardens in schools so that when um, families are needing extra groceries, they can just pick fruits and vegetables right yeah. off the school's garden. Yeah. And and actually they were able to help a lot of families during this pandemic when resources got low. Mm-hmm. It was those little gardens that were feeding those families. Yes. So support, donate, donate some garden supplies and um they also do like working out things. Yeah. I with know people you find out more about them too if you go to our website. Um, not, well, not to the website, but if you go to our Facebook, because we got a link up for the anniversary, right? We got information up for the anniversary. Yeah. So, yeah, you can just go on our page, and you will find their um, event thing with all the event information. So, yeah, come out and help us celebrate our silver members at 11 a.m. Um, it's at a park. I don't remember exactly which park. <laughs> but it's on the invitation. It is. On the invitation. <laughs> if, you just go, if you go, even if you go to the um, Kingdom Women Enterprise Facebook page, it will be up there too. I'm trying to find out. Yeah, you're I, still I just, I just put everything in my phone, and my phone tells me I can't afford an assistant. So Siri, 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 <laughs> is your assistant? Here it's my assistant. Here we go. There we go. It's right here. This is, okay, Barney Park. I knew it was a park. So Barney Park at that's Barney with a V, not a B. So yeah, not Barney, Barney, not Barney, Barney. Uh, at eleven eight two zero North eighty first Avenue, Peoria, a, um, Peoria, AZ eight five three four five. So Saturday at eleven a.m. Let's party, party, party. Then um, our upcoming. Um, networking event will be September 18th, our fall fresh, fall fresh, freshly fallen. Yeah. Falling fresh. <laughs> well, you need the Lord to fall fresh on. That's mm-hmm. what he's going to do. Amen. And come and connect with us and get to know other business professionals. If you're interested in being a vendor, we are taking, um, vendors, um, Availability now. You can either uh, purchase a vendor's table. We have like um, eight online. tables left. Eight, yeah, eight. Eight tables left. Eight already. We're only down to eight. Mm-hmm. In September is like a few months from now. So, like, get your tables because the tables are going fast. Dang. And we just we just announced this, and mm-hmm. it's all. And the tables are already going. Eight tables. So if you want to be a vendor at the event, just go to kindlewomenenterprise.org, um, hit uh, vendors, and get you a table. Yeah, get you a table. And we will see you there. And uh, we also, if you are a person that um, food trucks, um, also, there's a link for you on our website for a food truck if you want to be a uh, a vendor that sells food at the event. And they have, have a, a big um, parking lot space. Yeah. So we can set Where up a couple of vendors out there. Yeah, a couple of food trucks. Probably like maybe three or four. Yeah, food trucks. Yeah, we can. Yeah, so. Yeah. Get you a table before it runs out. Okay? Don't say you weren't warned. We told you. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So I think that was it. Mm-hmm. On your Kingdom Woman Enterprise news. Um, Are we doing a hair thing? Okay. Yeah. 
This yeah. girl is so funny. It's hot. Oh, wait. It is. I'm telling you all, hot. all these lights, you be cooking. I thank the Lord for makeup because I will be sweating. Even though my mom, she kind of shiny. Y'all see her forehead? My cousin I sweat, I tell you the truth. I see, sweat. that's why you need that set in makeup. It, it keeps you from sweating. Anyway, it just makes smooth. you look smooth. I am smooth. What are you talking about, sweetie? You is. You silky smooth, mom. You got that silky right. Silky smooth. Mm. Mm. All right. So I feel like we talked <laughs> talked y'all long enough. Um, yeah. Have, yeah. It's been... We thank everyone that joined. We thank everyone that asked questions. I thank um, my sister for changing the whole topic tonight for mm-hmm. us. Thank you. Um so this topic is no longer and I just reflection. Want, and I just want people to know we are not at all, not even a little bit, relationship experts. <laughs> Especially not me. You can forget that. All but, I can do is share what I made mistakes on and how I improved. Me too. How I finally got and, my bow and ass only, instead of a broke. And a <laughs> That's all we can And do. a dumb. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. Okay. But... Thank you for joining us. We do appreciate it. I hope you catch us next month on the third Wednesday. And my sister will be coming here. My sister Lisa will be coming here. So hopefully we oh, can so get her up yeah. here on the Women Power well, Wednesday. Well, it be next month. No, it'll be July. It'll, it'll be, be July. July. Yeah. To, to, we're going to save the next one for when she come. Well, no. Well, I mean, we're going to do one in June, but July. She'll be... In the July one. Yeah, maybe August. Yeah, too. maybe by then maybe she get to, finally to pursued her bow ass so she could tell you guys about it. If she got her bow ass, she probably won't come to visit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you for joining us. We do appreciate it. We wish you all the best. And um, we hope that all of you ladies who are 50 and plus, who are seeking and dating, that you guys do find your Boaz, find that mate for you, and don't forget to pursue what you want. Get what you want, okay? Amen. Amen. Have a good night. Thank you.